For gamers, April's gonna be a busy month. Let's have a look at why. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, games you need to play in April 2019. Number 10 is Dangerous Driving, which I think does a pretty good job of specifically telling you exactly what it is. However, to go a step further, it comes from the people who made the Burnout series and is a spiritual successor too. The developers say the game is built in the spirit of the classic arcade racing games of the 80s and 90s, however, it obviously looks a lot better. The whole idea of the game is to incentivize dangerous driving. The more dangerously you drive, the faster you can go. And let's just be completely honest, there hasn't been enough racing games like this in a while. Racing games that just don't mirror real life at all. Not to say that I don't like me a good simulation, but I gotta say I miss this kind of racing game. This is the stuff that got me playing racing games in the first place. And in some respects, racing games were like this in the 80s and 90s because of technical limitations, but there's a certain element of style and personality that this kind of game brings to the table that a simulation just doesn't. Obviously, there are certain elements that simulation brings to the table that this game isn't gonna, but I hope this game is really successful and brings us back to a place where both of these kinds of games exist, because I like both of them. Frankly, Dangerous Driving, I can't wait. I'm gonna be buying it, I'm gonna be playing it. Dangerous Driving is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on April 9th. Number 9 is Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, which is a remaster of, honestly, kind of an overlooked Final Fantasy game. I think in recent years, it's it's really gotten the kind of attention it deserved when they remastered it for PlayStation 4 and PC a couple years back, and this month it'll be landing on Xbox One and Switch, which is two places, frankly, I think that deserve this game. It's a game that sort of builds on a lot of concepts in Final Fantasy while trying a lot of new things. It kind of goes action RPG, kind of doesn't. I say that because the battle system is not really turn-based, not really action RPG. It's a somewhat tough to describe mix of the two, but once you've nailed it down, it's actually a very intuitive system. And the ability to sort of build up your various complicated chains between characters and all that is really what the Gambit system, the heart of this game, is about, and it's really enjoyable, actually. It's also much better looking than it was in 2006, not necessarily because it looked bad, but because hardware did really limit like things like resolution and all of that. I mean, the original was a PlayStation 2 game, but I'm gonna go ahead and say this, playing this remaster does not feel like you're playing a PlayStation 2 game, and I consider that fairly impressive. Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, like I said, is out on most platforms, but will be coming to Xbox One and Switch on April 30th. Number 8 is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy, which is the first three Ace Attorney games. These are games that basically you investigate crimes, you present evidence, and you put people in jail. I mean, it's not actually a pleasant premise when you think about it, but the game itself is very fun. And now we have it in full widescreen HD. These games are chock full of personality, they're fun, they're silly, and frankly, they have never looked better. If you compare these graphics to any previous version, they've just got a great mix of high resolution, knowing the backgrounds need to not be so busy. They've sort of gone for a slightly more minimalist look with the backgrounds, and frankly, it's everything I could have asked for, and you get to play Ace Attorney on, like, all the platforms now. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy will be hitting PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Microsoft Windows on April 9th. Number 7 is Ono 1800, which I think is actually a really interesting take on the city builder, having you build a city during the Industrial Revolution at the turn of the 19th century. Now, if you're familiar with Ono, it has done this in various settings, including the near future, the far future, and in my opinion, this is probably one of the more interesting because you have to deal with things like pollution, which is, I mean, it's the Industrial Revolution, it's basically all pollution, worker strikes, you have to build trains, you have to deal with a lot of the new technology that we kind of take for granted today. And they've also gone ahead and done something that I think is cool in creating a new blueprint mode, which allows you to more or less build the city and then have it fill itself in as you get the money and resources to do it, kind of allowing you to plan the city as you go, change things before you have the resources, and, you know, sort of fulfill it as you continue to manage the city. There is also a need to bring in tourism, which, considering we're talking about the Industrial Revolution, 
we're talking about a highly polluted time of the march of human society should be a very interesting dynamic. Anno 1800 is hitting Microsoft Windows on April 16th. I'm definitely playing it. Number six is World War Z, which in some ways you could say Days Gone isn't far from the concept of this game. However, it seems the execution actually is pretty different. Where Days Gone comes off as kind of an open world roaming experience in which you exist in a wasteland, World War Z puts you in urban environments and gives you scenarios that you have to play out. It is a four player co-op third person shooter that is intended to have horde mechanics that are both impressive and maybe a little bit claustrophobic. Thus far, what we've seen in this game actually does make it look like a fun game to play. It's got some very arcadey looking gameplay. It reminds me in some ways of Left 4 Dead, but in other ways it does seem a little bit more complex. And in my mind, that's good. I'm interested. I'm personally definitely going to check it out. And I hope that it's better than the movie, honestly. That's kind of what I think it's going to be. So I hope I'm not wrong about that. World War Z is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows on April 16th. Number five is Super Meat Boy Forever, and I think this game is gonna be controversial, but ultimately when the dust settles, I think it's probably going to be considered good, if not an exact follow-up to Super Meat Boy. I have pretty specific expectations as to the reaction to this game, but I also have a pretty positive expectation of the game itself. Now, they have changed the gameplay fairly significantly to an auto-runner, which to me is just it's a thing that's gonna make people angry regardless of how good it is. But I think ultimately the people involved with the game are very talented developers and I think it is going to be good nonetheless. Now, will that mean Super Meat Boy fans are kind to it and enjoy it? I don't know. I'm actually quite interested to see if it turns out being well received or if it turns out being rejected. I have a feeling that the game itself is actually going to be pretty good, but is it going to be Super Meat Boy? That's really gonna be the question. Number four is Dauntless, a multiplayer free-to-play monster hunting action game with RPG elements, of course, that to me just sounds very interesting. For one, it's gorgeous. The colors, the art style, everything involving that. I love what the monsters look like, and I'm very interested just based on that aspect alone. However, I also am interested in that it was developed by former Riot Games employees that formed Phoenix Labs and have declared that this game is influenced obviously by Monster Hunter, but also by Dark Souls, in that it is a hardcore action game. And although Monster Hunter can be pretty hard, I think that is a bold statement. This is a game that has done a good job in its beta phase. People have liked it. I'm personally here for the Switch version. I know it's probably not gonna be as technically wonderful as the other ones, however, I love the Nintendo Switch, and it seems like a perfect game to play on that. Being it's free to play, I will say I am definitely diving right into it, and I'm going to bother all of my friends to dive into it as well. Although you can play it single player, the idea of cooperatively playing with up to four people to me is just exactly what I want to do. I've got my fingers crossed it is at least as good as Monster Hunter, if not close to as good. Dauntless is coming out of early access this month and will be coming to various consoles over the course of the summer and possibly later in the year for the Switch and smartphones. Number three is Dragon's Dogma Dark Horizon, which let's go ahead and say isn't a particularly new game, but it is, however, a very good game. Being they put Skyrim on Switch, why not this? Because this game in some ways is actually more enjoyable. Not that Skyrim isn't amazing, it's actually one of the best games ever made, but this came a couple years later and benefited from a few key advancements, particularly in the movement. People were starting to expect things like parkour in games. And I'm not saying this is like a parkour game or anything, but compared to Skyrim, it is. Also, the magic is great, customizable, and for me, I think this is a great opportunity to go back through Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Number two is Days Gone, a game we reference when we're talking about World War Z, and I think worthwhile to bring up in some deal of contrast, where World War Z looks a lot like a sort of Left 4 Dead arcade scenario-based game. Days Gone looks very much 
like a big exploration based narrative in which you are a lone wolf traversing the country. The reason I mentioned Days Gone was the horde mechanic that again is present in both games, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that the horde mechanic in this one to me seems bigger and wilder and less in control. Like I said, World War Z in some ways comes off as a Left 4 Dead style, maybe not take itself super seriously at every moment type game. Where Days Gone does seem to do just that. It seems to be going fully for the atmosphere of being engulfed by zombies. And honestly, I'm kind of there for both approaches, but I'm really looking forward to see if this actually pays off. I'm gonna play both. I'm looking forward to Days Gone. Like I said, particularly for the atmosphere, particularly for the narrative, particularly for the intent to actually make you feel overwhelmed by the hordes of zombies. And I will be doing just that when it comes out on PlayStation 4 on April 26th. And finally, number one is Mortal Kombat 11. In a lot of ways, I think this is going to be probably one of the better Mortal Kombat titles. Now, the X-Ray moves were obviously always very cool, and they've sort of broken that off into two separate moves. For instance, the Fatal Blow, which is something you can only do when your health is below 30%, and you can only do it once per game, not round game. There's also the Crushing Blows, which kind of work much more similarly to the x-ray attacks, which you kind of have to combo into. And finally, they've given a perfectly timed block the reward of a small counterattack window, which I think really incentivizes the game a little differently, and it makes me excited for seeing some pretty intense matches by people who have better reflexes than myself. Although I do think that I am going to enjoy it as well. Ed Boon said microtransactions aren't going to be pay to win and won't make us angry in a recent interview. So I'm interested in that because if I'm honest, and I've mentioned this before, but I didn't love the whole pay for fatalities thing. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 11 is gracing the Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and PC with its presence on April 23rd. And a quick bonus for you, Cuphead is hitting the Switch. Cuphead is a phenomenal game, platform shooter, side-scrolling, with beautiful animation that I cannot wait to play on the Switch. What games are you looking forward to in April 2019? Did we cover them? Did we not? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.